And we're rolling overview of the Bible, Revelation. We're picking up here in Revelation chapter 6, and we just got done. John was called up into the heaven into heaven in the spirit in chapter 4, and he sees this incredible time of worship. But he's overwhelmed by the fact that no one is found worthy to open the book, the book that's there that's sealed. And, and finally they say, no, the Lion of Judah, who's also a lamb that was slain, is worthy. And so that's where we pick up when we get to chapter 6. And uh, in verse 1 it says, And I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as with a voice of thunder, Come! And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Oh, So we see the beginning here, the opening of these. There's seven seals that open the book, and this first one that's opened is this conquering one on a white horse going. And some people have thought this is maybe uh, Jesus, but it's really the, a false, it looks to me like this is a false Christ, a false con- uh, Jesus that's going out initially to conquer. And we see later that Jesus comes on a white horse, uh, but this isn't, I don't believe this is it. And so we, the seals are opened here, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the details of the, especially the first ones. Uh, the second seal is a, it's open up and there's a red horse and it's, it's war that breaks out. The third seal, uh, and there's a black horse, and it's famine that's throughout the world. And the fourth seal, it says, is uh, an ashen horse, a pale horse. And it says, uh, I'm going to read a couple verses there. In verse 7, it says, And when he broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come. And I looked, and behold, an ashen horse. And he who sat on it had the name Death and Hades was following with him, and authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and with the famine, with the pestilence, and by the wild beasts of the earth. So you see in this series, there's just one after another. There's incredible plagues, uh, things that are happening upon the earth, uh, outpourings. And here it says the sword, pestilence, beasts of the earth. It's like everything has gone wild, and, and they see large numbers of people being killed each time this this talks takes place each new seal that's opened so we get to the the fifth seal and this one is uh i'll read a few verses hard to uh, skip over this one it says and when he broke the fifth seal i saw under underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of god because of the testimony which they had maintained and they cried out with a cried out with a loud voice saying how long O lord holy and true Wilt thou refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? So there's a cry out for justice. And one of the things that we see in this whole thing, which I believe this is a picture of the day of the Lord, is a day of judgment, a day of justice, a day when the Lord has his way and brings righteousness back into the earth and cleanses the whole whole earth of evil. And then verse 11, so they're saying, when are you going to bring some kind of judgment and avenging our blood of those who dwell on the earth because they've all been martyred? And there was given to each one, verse 11, of them a white robe, and they were told that they would rest a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed, even as they had been, should be completed also. So they're told, uh, even they've been through a martyr's death, they've given their lives for Jesus, and they're saying, when are you going to avenge this? And the Lord just says, wait. There's others that are going to, this is going to happen. There needs to be a completed number here for some reason. Only God would know them the mystery of time. Each one of those people, I'm sure, has an, a, a great effect on, on uh, their realm of influence. I remember uh, being on the, the shorefront, uh, the beach at the Medi- Mediterranean Sea when I was living in Morocco and walking along that beachfront there. And, and just down a couple countries from me, I, I saw later that day that there had been about 20 Christian men who were t- marched down to the, the beach. They had orange, orange jumpsuits on. You might have seen it. I didn't watch the actual thing that happened, but they were beheaded, and, and their blood was flowing into the sea that I was walking next to. And it was just, to me, it was a very traumatic time. But there's been martyrs throughout history, and a lot even today that are, are being killed. And so the Lord said to those that are under the throne, under the altar at that time, wait until the number is completed of those that are going to be uh, slain like you were. Uh, then it goes on, and the sixth seal is open. Now, this is a significant seal. Like I said, uh, I've said before, some people thought this whole book is uh, like the seals has been a progression of time historical, like the first five seals have already been open, and we're waiting for the opening of the sixth seal. Uh, I don't know that that's, I think, 
I think these things are all kind of culminated in the last three and a half years uh, that we're here. But I'm uh, before the, the end of this age, and um, but I don't know for that for sure. But verse 12 here, it's, it's the opening of the sixth seal. And I look when he broke the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair and the whole moon became like blood. Now that's a common theme when we see a day of judgment, in particular this day of judgment that's prophesied over and over again. But, you know, the sun turning to darkness, the moon to blood, earthquake, that kind of thing. Even at the time, at the day of Pentecost, we said that... Uh, you know, uh, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And Joel said, the sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood. Well, at that time, in Acts chapter 2, they had just seen at the crucifixion of Jesus, the sun went dark in the middle of the day. So the sun went, the sun turned to darkness, moon to blood, day of judgment. Well, that, that was a judgment, but that judgment was the sin of the world falling upon the Savior of the world. And this is a judgment at the end of the age where those that wouldn't accept that sacrifice... Uh, of uh, that was put upon Jesus uh, are judged at the end of the end of the age, and so it says here the the whole moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth. Now we're told in the beginning chapters that the stars here are talking about angels, and so there's a there's a falling probably principalities, powers. It's talking about angelic beings in heavenly places that have uh, leadership. We talk we hear about the prince of Persia in the book of Daniel. There's ones like that. It seems like here. They're being shaken out of the heavens. There's a judgment. Everything in, on the earth is being shaken, but things in the heavens also. The stars of the sky fell to the earth as a, as a fig tree casts its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. So it's like they're just, you know, that's, that's talking about the, the figs aren't ready yet, but the wind is so strong it knocks them out. And so here's a, here's a judgment that comes along. Maybe they weren't, you know, it's like they're just being cast down out of uh, the heavens like unripe figs out of a, out of a fig tree. And the sky was split apart like a scroll when it was rolled up, and every mountain and island were removed out of their places. This is, it, it kind of talks about this in Isaiah also. Isaiah talks about the, the dark, the sun going dark too. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the commanders, and the rich, and the strong, and every slave and free man hid themselves in the caves among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Who is able to stand? No one. You know, now that's a rhetorical question at the end here. Talking about this great judgment that's coming. And so this is the opening of the sixth seal. This is a dramatic change and an acceleration into the very end time events, the last judgments that would come upon the earth. And so it, it goes from there into into chapter 7. Now we haven't seen the seventh seal open. Sixth seal. This is a, all of a sudden there's this pause. We had the first five went real quick. The sixth one we moved right into, and all of a sudden there's this pause. And in, in chapter 7, it uh, begins to talk a little bit about that. And there's uh, they see this angels holding back what's happening on the earth. And, and uh, verse 3 says, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. So here's the first uh, uh, sealing. You know, we seal on the foreheads, it says. And it's not... The six six thing that everyone six 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 thing that everyone talks about in the book of Revelation, but it's a protection ceiling that's happening to the this this group of people, uh, so that nothing that's coming upon the earth will harm them. They are protected, uh, kind of like uh, the Psalm ninety one, where a thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but nothing will come nigh you, or Psalm forty six, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Even though the earth should change, we shall not fear. You know, because, you know, the mountains quake in the heart of the sea. It, it goes on, just all of this kind of thing. And, uh, but it's saying here that these will be protected. And then it, it, it enumerates it down here. And it says there's 144,000 that are sealed in their forehead from the tribes of Israel. And uh, each of the tribes that are mentioned. It's interesting in this, uh, one tribe that isn't mentioned is a tribe of Dan. Uh, and there's different uh, rabbinical reasons I've heard in the past for that. And I'm not going to go into that at this point, but uh, what it does mention here is that there's the tribe of Joseph and the tribe of Manasseh, which Manasseh was one of Joseph's sons. So somehow in this scenario, Joseph's tribe actually has, uh, there's 12,000 from, from Joseph and 12,000 from Manasseh. So he gets uh, 24,000. Each of the other tribes has 12,000. And uh, they're sealed and protected from the harm that's released as this sixth seal is being opened.